Hi, I'm Dr. Marie Helen Gagnon from the Academy of Online Radiology Education. I work for Mallinckrodt Institute of Radiology in St. Louis. And this is Dr. Viet Lee from the Academy of Online Radiology Education. I work at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center in Ohio. We would like to thank our senior editors for their contributions to this month's pediatric radiology blog. Dr. Paul Gillerman from Texas Children's Hospital, Dr. Alex Tobin from Cincinnati Children's, and Dr. Talissa Altez from University of Missouri in Columbia. We are all so excited to share the current literature in pediatric radiology with you. The significance of abdominal radiographs with paucity of gas in pediatric adhesive small bowel obstruction. This retrospective study evaluates the significance of paucity of gas on initial abdominal radiographs in patients with small bowel obstruction. Paucity of gas was more commonly associated with closed loop or high grade bowel obstruction and the need for surgical intervention when compared to gas distended loops of bowel seen on abdominal radiographs. Sedated ultrasound guided ceiling reduction of ileocolic intussusception, 20 year experience. This is a retrospective study which examined the technical success rate as well as the perforation rate of sedated ultrasound guided ileocolic intussusception reduction versus traditional pneumatic or fluoroscopic guidance reductions. The technical success rates in this case were similar to the pneumatic reduction without any cases of perforation. However, the lack of proper sonographic and technical training, as well as the use of anesthesia, may preclude the use of this technique at non-specialized hospitals. Long T1 mapping magnetic resonance imaging and the assessment of pulmonary disease in children with cystic fibrosis, a pilot study. This was a two-phase prospective study which examined if T1 mapping could identify early lung disease in children with cystic fibrosis or could assess treatment response during acute exacerbations. The findings show that T1 mapping can help detect early lung disease and monitor treatment response during exacerbations in patients with cystic fibrosis. However, this was a very small sample size. Body fat distribution, overweight, and cardiac structures in school-age children, a population-based cardiac magnetic resonance imaging study. This is a population-based prospective cohort study that looked at the associations of general and abdominal body fat with right and left ventricular structure and function in overweight children. Lean mass index had the strongest association with left ventricular end diastolic volume, but no statistical difference was seen with left ventricular ejection fraction. Obesity is associated with lower right ventricular ejection fraction. Accuracy of ultrasound in the diagnosis of classical metaphyseal lesions using radiographs as the gold standard. This is a prospective study which examined the sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy of ultrasound in detecting classic metaphyseal lesions. It showed a high accuracy and specificity for ultrasound, but a low sensitivity. Therefore, this technique could be used as an adjunct for indeterminate lesions on radiographs, but should not be used as a primary source for identification alone. Diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound for upper extremity fractures in children a systematic review and meta-analysis. This was a systematic review of databases with a random effects bivariate model for the meta-analysis. The study determined the diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound for upper extremity fractures in children compared to radiographs by examining the sensitivity, specificity, positive and negative likelihood ratios, and the area under the ROC curve. Ultrasound has excellent diagnostic performance for upper extremity fractures, and it could serve as an alternative to radiographs with experienced hands. Postpyloric balloon occlusion to increase technical success during pediatric percutaneous gastrostomy slash jejunostomy to placement. This is a retrospective study which examined the technical success rate of postpyloric balloon occlusion when placing percutaneous feeding tubes in kids. While this technique was shown to help increase success rate on difficult cases, 
Some factors like persistent colonic interposition or hepatomegaly could not be overcome and showed the need for continued surgical placement of gastrostomy tube placement in certain cases. This technique also increases the sedation and fluoroscopy time to young patients. Accuracy of MR imaging for detection of sensory neural hearing loss in infants with bacterial meningitis. This is a retrospective study that evaluated the diagnostic accuracy of MRI for predicting the development of sensory neural hearing loss among infants with bacterial meningitis. Abnormal contrast enhancement and increased flare signal of the inner ear are highly specific for predicting sensory neural hearing loss. The findings should raise awareness and encourage closer assessment of the inner ear in patients with bacterial meningitis who undergo routine brain MRIs. One minute ultrafast brain MRI with full basic sequences. Can it be a promising way forward for pediatric neuroimaging? This retrospective study looked at the one minute ultrafast brain MRI protocol compared to the routine brain MRI protocol in pediatric patients. The one minute ultrafast brain MRI has sufficient image quality for diagnostic use compared to routine brain MRI. A shorter scan time suggests lower rates of scan failure, reduced need for sedation, and decreased anxiety related to MRI examinations. Radiation dose of chaperones during common pediatric computed tomographic examinations. This is a prospective study which recorded multiple radiation doses at three locations during CT scans for chest CTs in pediatrics using phantoms and real patients. It showed that the lowest dose, and in fact no radiation dose, was received when the dosimeter was placed next to the CT grant tree. Therefore, it is safe for chaperones to accompany children during their CT scans. However, this does not extrapolate to other forms of pediatric imaging, such as fluoroscopy. Thanks so much for listening. For more details, please visit our blog where you can also find the links to the original publications. Feel free to share your thoughts and questions on the Pediatric Radiology Forum. See you next month.